which the Bible says they did. Also, you've got uh, stories and historical accounts and legends like St. George and the Dragon. You know, the dragons are mentioned in the Bible. And St. George was known to be an historical figure. Oh, yes. Who actually died, I think, April the uh, 17th, 303 A.D., uh, and was actually martyred for his Savior and literally did rescue a princess uh, from a fate worse than death. Now, I think that this is probably... Uh, fictionalized some because Certainly. nothing like this actually lived. His little teeny wings could never get this any lift. But why did the sculptor and the artist in the painting make a dinosaur leg on a reptile? See, no, no living reptile has a leg like this. This is like a, a dog leg. No living reptile. Only the dinosaurians have straight legs like that. I find that very interesting. Yes. Plus, uh, you, you might tell a little bit about the uh, Ica stones. Oh, actually, I have been, I have flown over. Not only have I been to uh, Nazca, I have examined in the area of Inca, Nazca, and Tiwanaka, the evidence. I have flown over the lines. I have personally observed poles that were carved dating back hundreds and hundreds of years, carved with men and dinosaurs. We have six different samples of men and dinosaurs on the same burial stone. And I have visited those graves and have seen uh, verified evidence, impeccable evidence, that the stones actually came from those graves and the burial occurred hundreds of years ago. And uh, one of the things that really amazes me, Dr. Jackson, is the fact that as they depict these dinosaurs, they, they show dermal frills on them. Uh, the evolutionary community of paleontologists ridiculed that and said, uh, they didn't have dermal frills until 1993 when in Scandinavia an entire cache of dinosaurs was collected and they all had either the frills or the knobs to support the frills uh, on the spinal column. In addition to that, the rosette patterns are depicted here. Now, we have some skin from an ankylosaurus uh, from Bolivia and it has beautiful rosette patterns. A rosette pattern is a floral pattern on the skin, on that dinosaur skin. It was kind of like on the knee of an elephant. Yes. Very similar design, yes. Yeah, a design, a, yeah. a design is correct, <laughs> and pattern. And, and each leaf becomes the center, of, each petal becomes the center of another entire floral design. It's a beautific design. And again, in Scandinavia, they found, the, with the skin intact, that most dinosaurs must have had this rosette floral pattern. So in order to represent these as stegosaurus, even triceratops, and some long sauropods, to represent them so faithfully, they had to see these creatures alive. So there's tangible scientific evidence verifying creation. Now would you take us to the Grand Canyon? Well, a, a lot of uh, evolutionists ask me, okay, well, if you believe in the flood of Noah, where'd all the water go? And, and isn't there any sign? Surely a worldwide flood would have left a sign. Well, what would we expect? If the world had been flooded completely, what would we expect is the backsloshing of a global flood to leave washed around layers of mud, sand, silt, clay, and gravel with the bones of dead things that were drowned in that flood stuck in them. And of course, this is uh, what Ken Ham of Answers in Genesis is very fond of saying, and they even wrote a song with that title, Billions of Dead Things Buried in Rock Lairs Laid Down by Water All Over the Earth. And that is exactly what we find uh, very well shown in the Grand Canyon. Precisely. St. Peter's Sandstone, a sandstone layer that covers the entire United States with sand grains all pointing in the same direction as though a big tsunami came up out of the Atlantic Ocean and washed across the continent in one swoop is just evidence. But they'll tell you a river delta did that. A, a continental river delta. Something that Absolutely covers it. impossible. And then, of course, the dust on the moon. Well, we, we have just a moment left. Would you bring us to a climactic statement? Well, this Dr. looks Jackson. like moon craters, but that's Mars. And the reason I have a picture of Mars is because this Grand Canyon on Mars is 1,500 miles long. Longer than ours, bigger than ours, on a planet smaller than ours, but evolutionists believe in a flood on Mars, a desert planet has no water today. I believe it was a flood, because what else could cut yes. this? But since water could only exist for a very brief time on Mars, they believe that this Grand Canyon occurred in only three weeks, but that our Grand Canyon took millions of years. You see... Five to ten million. 
They'll believe in a flood on a planet that's, that's uh, dry, but not on a planet that's three-fourths covered with water two miles deep. We have seen evidence substantiated and overwhelming to the point that it is impossible not to be affected by this evidence. We must embrace the truth. The truth is there was a global flood in judgment. It is evidenced worldwide. The truth is that it was a simple statement, a forthright statement by a loving God who did not want that generation we call the antediluvians to live forever in a godless state. Therefore, he brought judgment and new hope with a family of believers. And that brings me to you. In the appropriate time, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. That means that in the fullness of time, God sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. He shed his blood. He was buried, but he rose again by the power of the Father, the Spirit, and his own power. He is God in the flesh. That being the case, he's alive, knocking at your heart's door at this very moment. He said, Behold, I stand at the heart's door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Would you pray this simple prayer? Just pray it from your heart with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I know sin has to be judged. And I realize that Jesus took my judgment at Calvary. So I want him in my heart. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart to you. Right now, step in. Cover me with your blood and cleanse my sin. And I'll serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that prayer, welcome home to the family of God. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.